everyone, my name is Sandra Nokia, and with me today is Sarada Tumitika. Sarada Tumitika is a lawyer and is a pre-marriage HR official. She's also a human rights activist, social entrepreneur, and violence in victim and myself. She currently works as a victim of sex violence by assisting with pro bono legal aids to help cause women. Sarada, you're welcome. Thank you for having me. Today we'll continue our discussion on the fair of last timing on violence Violence against women and girls has been in existence since time past, and society is the most common human rights violation in Nigeria. In the recent findings conducted by Lawyers Alert, April 2019, um, which can be found on our website, it shows that several capital charges in Abuja are at 54%, and it has the highest rate of violation in Nigeria, and the second is the following state. Sadly, can you please tell us? Um, the most common form of gender-based violence in Nigeria. Okay, um, thank you, Ify. Um, basically, we have four types of gender-based violence, and these are the most common types of gender-based violence found in Nigeria. We have the physical violence, we have the sexual violence, we have the psychological violence, and the economic violence. Um, the physical violence are any acts which causes physical harm to an individual. These are unlawful actions taken against the victim. There could either be in the form of serious major assaults, there could either be minor assaults, or there could sometimes lead to murder and manslaughter. We also have the sexual abuse violence. These are any form of unlawful sexual acts which are perpetrated against an individual. These could either be rape, sometimes they may not lead to rape, sometimes they could be just sexual acts that are perpetrated against the victim. We also have the psychological violence. This is a form of gender-based violence which causes psychological harm against the victim. Um, the psychological-based violence could take the form of um, slander, label, coercion, defamation, and sometimes even verbal assaults which causes um, psychological harm against the individual. Um, and finally, we have the economic violence. Um, economic violence, it's such behavior which causes economic harm against any individual. It could either be property damage. Uh, sometimes the uh, victim could be restricted from using their economic resources. They could be restricted from working the labor market. Sometimes it could either be education or using their resources. So these are the basically the most common forms of economic um, violence. Thank you. Are many forms of violence against women and girls? From our findings, I have a lot of time. It shows that physical abuse is the highest crime in Nigeria, but the most women. Why do you think this is? Um, in Nigeria, we have uh, a lot of problems that causes um, gender-based violence against women. It could boil down to the structural inequalities we have in Nigeria. We have um, basically a lot of societal norms that, in a way, promote gender-based violence against women. There are some beliefs that um, people in Nigeria grew up with, which lends credence to physical violence rendered against women. Uh, for example, um, uh, growing up, like um, there's a form of disparity between the way the ladies are treated and the way the men are treated. So when you're young and you see that um, the guys are placed somewhat above a woman, like there's no equality or should I say equity, because um, these are two different things which you may discuss later, then a guy would grow up thinking that yes, he is above a woman and anything he says should go. And when you grow up thinking that, uh, you do not care when sometimes things you want a lady to do could infringe on her own personal rights and when she doesn't do such things. Like when people are in a relationship and she doesn't do such things that you ask her to do, uh, you think that it's your right for her to do it. Even if it infringes on her rights, this leads to physical violence against women in Nigeria. Yes. Okay, um, um, let me bring religion into it, like um, Islamically, uh, some people have this belief 
that they are allowed to cause physical harm against women. This is totally wrong. And um, recently, there have been a lot of religious leaders that have come out to say that this is a totally wrong notion um, that uh, people have grown up believing. So you think that you have a wife and she is basically your slave and anything you say goes. And if she doesn't do something that you want her to do, you're allowed to cause her physical harm. No, you're actually a woman's protector. You're supposed to protect your wife. You're supposed to protect the person you're in a relationship with. You are not allowed to cause physical harm in any way whatsoever towards um, the ladies. But because people grow up having this wrong notion that it is allowed for them to do that, they still do it. So with our reorientation, which thankfully it's ongoing now, they cause physical harm to the women. Yes. Um, in our society today, there's a lot of stigma attached to people who report cases. Um, to the law enforcement agencies. Um, for example, where uh, people in relationships or husband and wife or just it could be colleagues have disagreements and um, the lady who, sorry, I'll be saying the woman because obviously um, research has shown that they are the highest victim of such violence. So for example, where a woman is being beaten or sexually harassed and she goes to or raped sometimes raped and she reports to the law enforcement agencies the stigma starts from there law enforcement agents sometimes ask her what were you wearing when you were raped why did you go to so -so -so's person's house like they basically make you feel like you allowed these things to happen so this could because of how prevalent it is it has caused women not to report these cases. And also, there's a stigma attached to people who have been raped. It is, it is, so, it is so bad that um, the victims have more stigma attached to them than the actual rapists. The rapists go around like with their business, and the person who is raped has psychological effects. They have the physical trauma. So people don't like to report these cases. Also, it comes down to the family unit sometimes. Most people that are being raped are raped by people who they actually know. Yes, it happens strangers sometimes, but um, research has shown that there's a higher um, likelihood of you being raped by somebody who you actually know. It could be a family member that could rape these people. So when such things happen, Members of the family could sometimes hush this case. Okay, no, please don't report it. This is our cousin, this is your brother, this is your uncle, this son. So, so they try to hush it. So these are some of the reasons why these cases are not fully reported. Thank you. Um, mm. That brings me to the next question. How do you manage issues of Okay, it was it was a really bad case, and uh, a lot of people stood up to say no to it. There was protests around the country in Abuja, in Lagos, to mention just a few. I think the ways in which we can curb this menace is to have a reorientation of of the way that our law enforcement agencies um, look at the victims of this violence. There's there was this um, debate when this thing happened that, oh, okay, because these people were taken from clubs, because some of these people were prostitutes, they actually deserved to be raped by these law enforcement agents. But no, this is not so. Prostitution in Nigeria may be a crime, but because you commit one crime doesn't give another person the right to rape you. Like, because somebody wears a certain kind of dress doesn't give somebody the right to rape you. So, um, we need to educate these people. Like, um, they need to 
there needs to be a sort of orientation. They, maybe they can have seminars so that um, the law enforcement agencies could call people. We have a lot of non-government organizations now who are into these things like the, yes like Lois a lot thank you very much like you could come up to the law enforcement agencies that could bring you in and um, bring these people and tell them that you know this is not the way to look at um, people who have been faced with um, gender-based violence these are actually the victims like this is not the way to approach them like we need to look at them with compassion we need to we need to know that um, a bad thing has happened to them. They're not the perpetrators of this act, they're the victims. So I think there needs to be a very high level of education and orientation of this law enforcement agency so they should know that these are actually victims. These are not people who have committed this crime. So hopefully they can um, change the way they treat people that have been have passed through this. Thank you. Yeah. I'm more new to the job. Like, what do you think is the job for? Um, hopefully, with the way things are going now, um, we hope that there's going to be a massive drop in the in the in the high level of gender-based violence against women and children in Nigeria. Right now, we have a lot of agencies that are helping the victims um, before and after. We have a lot of non-governmental organizations that are educating people. Um, they start from the grassroots. You start from um, the primary to the secondary schools. They tell young people that this is not the way to treat women. Um, you educate them, telling that um, these are not these are actually your subordinates. They are not people that you could exert physical assault to when you feel that because you feel that you're more powerful or because you feel that you have more money, like you cannot um, exert psychological harm to them. All these things are actually, they're actually offenses by the law, liberal slander, like you cannot just harass anybody and think you can get away with it. So hopefully with these things happening with the reorientation, with the education, with the implementation of the laws that are being that are happening now. Like I, I have seen that right now um, perpetrators of rape are actually being tried in courts. Like even if the victims are too poor to report these cases, we have um, organizations that take up these cases, prosecute them, thank you, like us, that, that prosecute them to the last letter of law and see that these people are actually brought to book. So with the spate of these things happening, I hope and I pray that in the next, I don't want to say years, it could be days, it could be tomorrow, that these things are actually going to drop. I would love to see the day where it will totally become zero percent. There's no longer cases of gender-based violence in Nigeria. Thank, you, Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me.